Hello Mila, hello Jack. Hello everybody else who's watching. Welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is Mr. Ben Diver. The sun is shining in festive road and the children are listening to seashells. Mr. Ben is at the riverside watching the boats go by. The water seems to hold a world of adventures in it and it turns Mr. Ben to thinking of the costume shop. He goes to the shop and finds a red frogman's outfit. Perfect. He will dive under the sea and explore this watery world. Mr. Ben walks out of the changing room and onto a rocky shoreline. He climbs onto a stony promontory and prepares to dive underwater. But just as he is about to plunge into the sea, sailors from a red submarine call out to him. They are going underwater to win the race to photograph the monster. He doesn't really have time to reply before the sailors from a green submarine call out to him. They are anxious to let him know that they will be the first to see the monster and take its photograph. Mr Ben is not looking for any monster so he just dives into the sea and is plunged into the beautiful aqua landscape under the waves. He swims and floats amongst the gliding fish and seahorses bobbing up and down, where water plants waft in the swell, and everything is quiet here except for a chugging noise. He had almost forgotten about the submarines. He dives down deeper to escape the noise, and twists and turns to swim among a big shoal of fish. And then, quite to his surprise, he comes across a mermaid, and even more surprisingly, she is listening to seashells. The mermaid says hello and tells Mr. Ben that she is listening to all the different sounds that shells make because she wants to find a new sound to give to King Neptune for his birthday. Mr. Ben offers to help and soon they are combing the bottom of the sea for the shell with the best new sound. After a bit, Mr. Ben finds a black and yellow shell which quite definitely makes the noise of a buzzing bee. The mermaid is delighted. King Neptune certainly does not have that one, and together they swim to the king's underwater cave to give him the gift. King Neptune smiles at the birthday present, but he's not a happy king. Next to him sits a splendid pink creature who also looks miserable. It is the submarines, the king explains, they are forever cutting through the sea, looking for his monster to photograph. And it's such a nuisance, because it means that the king and the monster can't go out. Mr Ben sympathises, and then has an idea. He swims up to the surface and finds, as he expects, the green submarine filled with freshly disappointed sailors from their latest fruitless trip underwater. Their quest has been in vain. He sympathises and then makes a suggestion. They are probably scaring off the monster by looking so like, well, a submarine. Whereas if they dressed up the craft to look like a fellow monster, the real monster might be less camera shy. The sailors love the plan and straight away set to work. But of course, on the other side of Stony Promontory, Mr. Ben comes across the red submarine, and they take to the plan just as enthusiastically. Mr. Ben dives in the sea and sweeps up king, monster and mermaid to witness the inevitable as the submarines motor around taking photographs of each other. The king is delighted. The waters will be his again, and they all ride triumphantly on the monster's back to the shore. As Mr. Ben waves them goodbye, he sees the red submarine surfacing whilst proudly brandishing a photograph and in the other direction a, the green submarine emerges also flaunting monster snaps. The shopkeeper appears and leads Mr Ben into a cave and he finds himself back in the changing room. Back in Festive Road people are coming and going. A group of children are singing happy birthday and looking at presents. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everyone.
Bye.